Welcome to Q&A practice. We're going to start out with a little colloquy practice. So this will just be between defense attorney, plaintiff attorney, and the court. And we will start with the court. Ready? Here we go. So I have a couple of things. I'd like to know who the witnesses will be. We gave the government the list, did we not? Is that the most recent one? Sorry, Judge, you're not on our service list. We've taken Abe Turson off. Let me just concentrate on today and tomorrow. De Silva may be delayed. Is he on the top? Yes, he's number the fifth witness. He may be delayed, sixth on the list, delayed past today, either afternoon or yeah. So from the number that I see you have on today, they will be relatively brief. Is that, that's what we expect. Okay, so the first, I'm just trying to locate the expert. You have Mark Spencer tomorrow that you expect. Jerry Grant, who's number 10 on the list, he's an expert. I can speak on that behalf. I don't. Who's Spencer? That's going to be cell phone extraction. I don't think there's any controversy so far as I know. I think really he's going to be somewhat of a reader or at least someone who can click on some of the links that are in those and talk about where links and emails go. Your Honor, there's one file that he's trying to introduce substantively from one of Tamerlan's phones, which is a video of their daughter, Zahira, playing in the playground. It doesn't seem to connect with the defendant. It seems to be a distraction to humanize both Zahira and potentially the defendant's relationship with her. Well, I don't know. That raises a more general question. That is, for the exhibit objections, I'm going to have to obviously see the exhibits, which I haven't seen yet either. So if we can work on what you think are the controversial ones so I can get a head start on some of that, the exhibits are listed right. Do we have a thumb drive or anything with them? You should. New ones got added, I think, this morning to Paul's list. I think we went over a JERS disk with them. So they're in the system. JER disk, okay. Did you also want them separately for chambers? I don't know the technology, frankly, how I tap into JERS at this point. It goes into that system. It would be convenient to have a thumb drive or a disk to stick in my desktop. The JERS disk is just a PDF. Does Paul need to keep the thumb drive once we give it to him? That's the JERS one. I don't know. That's what I don't know the answer to. If you don't know, you know I don't know. Anyway, okay, but I'd just like to have a head start on this so I could have seen the controversial items I gather from the defendant's response to the government's extensive exhibit motion. A good bit of that is not going to be offered and not in controversy. Well, not discussed in the opening, but certainly a good bit of that is going to be offered. Well, for example, they have objection to numerous photos from our Russia expert Reynolds, but we are only going to use a few of them. We're not going to use the photos that are not taken from the defendant's computer, which the government is objecting to. We're going to use very non-controversial ones, such as maps and so forth. Generally speaking, I think the burden of the government's objections are not actually going to have to be ruled on. Okay. regular Q&A practice. Let's see what we have here. So 
actually. Let's try another one. Okay, this looks good. We will start with defense attorney. Ready? Here we go. Would those be once a month as well? The WCA would be once a month, the Discovery Center and LCWA quarterly. So the one that was monthly, the other one, which one was that again? The Rivers and Mountains Conservancy is monthly. And then you said there was one more that was monthly, the WCA, Watershed Conservation Authority, Watershed, I'm sorry, the others were quarterly, uh-huh. Is that a yes? Yes. So the other two were quarterly and were the duties similar? Similar with the exception of I didn't have to carry the tubs and put them on the dollies. The binders for the WCA were put into a case and I would take those, pull the case. So the watershed stuff went into a case, yes. And what about the other two? Did they go into a tub or case? Cases, LCWA went into a case, but the Discovery Center went into a tub, and I would just carry that tub. It wasn't as many board members, so it wasn't as many folders that I'd have to carry. Just one tub, and I always carried, I don't, a briefcase, not a briefcase, but a satchel, something like that, yes. For all of them, you carried that, yes. And so you only carried the one tub for the Discovery Center. Was that about the same weight, you'd say 30 plus pounds, yes. And how would you carry the one case for the other agencies? That went into a pull, something that I could pull. It's a carrier, right? I would put it in a carrier or carrier and drag that. It has like wheels. While I would carry my other, it has wheels, yes. And then do you have any idea how heavy that rolling case was? More than 30 pounds. Okay, so you, you're doing two agencies, the board meetings, compiling everything and carrying it. And then you're go, doing the other two quarterly, correct. Now any other duties that you had? Yes, I do the incoming mail, uh-huh. Answer phone, schedule appointments, I schedule transportation. Whenever anyone needs to go out of town, gosh, so much that I do. I'm the liaison for different agencies, for Cal HR, for CalPERS, Department of General Services, all the administrative type stuff, right? Yes, anything else, filing. What do you think you did the most on a typical day? Was it, it mostly sitting at the computer, up compiling, what would you? We're talking from eight, from 2011, March of 2011, uh-huh. Well, I'd say between two, March and June of 2011, I was up a lot more because I was working for the different agencies. So that required me to prepare for those board meetings, which required me to be up a lot more. Okay, so you basically moving from different offices, sitting down, standing up, moving, yes, okay. And was it different prior to March of 2011? No, it was about the same up until that day. Uh-huh, then what happened after March 2011? I was relieved of my duties for the APAs. That's what the other agencies are, APAs. What, what's JPA stand for? Allied Personnel Association. So now you're back to doing the rivers and mountains, yes. Q&A material. And this one starts with plenty of attorney. Ready? 
As the court knows, Mr. Strang, Mr. Budding, and the prosecution team had worked for several weeks on proposed stipulations of fact. We have tried to eliminate witnesses that were either unnecessary or would provide testimony or evidence that was really not contested or at consequence to the real issues in this lawsuit. And so, in an exchange of emails, Mr. Strang and I came up with these following stipulations. Most of them, Judge, I will tell you, do not have to be provided to the jury by way of affirmative comment by the court, but simply as an agreement, as happens in most trials between attorneys, that objections will not be made or an agreement as to admissibility of evidence. And so from that perspective, the parties have agreed as follows. First, that the DNA exemplar of the victim in this case, Lynn Hunter, which consisted of a pap smear, a cervical sample, would be admitted without the necessity of providing witnesses as to its how it was obtained, how it was stored, or the transport thereof. There will be testimony as to the DNA analysis performed by the Wisconsin Crime Lab by authentication and transport witnesses. Mr. Strang has agreed will not be required. If the judge wants to inquire of Mr. Strang, as we do these one at a time, that's fine, or I can do them all together. I don't care how the court wants to proceed. Mr. Strang, I think the much more efficient way to do this would be just to make a part of the record my February 4, 2007 email to Mr. Kratz, which lays out in writing just exactly what's stipulated and what's not. I think you know these go paragraphs A through W, and not all of them are stipulations, but most of them are. Do I understand that these are not for want of a term of art jury instruction? 162 stipulations that are going to be read to the jury. These are simply items pertaining to evidence that the parties are going to agree to as we go along. That's right, and that's a good distinction between these and the Stephen Schmitz stipulation. On the Stephen Schmitz stipulation, the stipulation is that had he been asked, he would have testified that his telephone number is 9288713218 so that's a stipulation about what evidence would have been given by a witness most of these just a minute is if there's another written document or something that's going to be received with his telephone number on it and it's not objected to i don't know that i have to instruct the jury in right all right that will conclude our Q&A practice.